On a day in August in 2006, the solar system changed. There was a vote in the city of Prague in the Czech Republic. If everybody who will be voting will just for practice hold their yellow card up so she can see where you all are. The International Astronomical Union, with a showing of yellow cards, decided that there were just eight planets in our solar system. Okay, thank you. Pluto was out. The decision made headlines and led to good-natured protests around the world. There were pro-Pluto marches in New Mexico, Seattle, and Hawaii. The man who started the controversy wasn't surprised. The, the, the planets are the biggest neighborhood that anybody knows. And if you suddenly say, no, nope, doesn't include Pluto anymore, you've, you've sort of taken something out of what their picture is of the solar system. The problem is their picture of the solar system was always wrong. It was a cartoon picture of the solar system, but you've changed that cartoon picture. Michael Brown is an astronomer and professor of planetary astronomy at the California Institute of Technology. He was studying the moons of Jupiter when he heard about the discovery of a tiny world beyond the orbit of Pluto. That, that very first discovery, um, which happened in, uh, in 1992, was of just one little object, maybe a hundred miles across, um, tiny, that, but, but moving, um, it, was, it was well past Pluto and moving in orbit around the sun, and there was just one of them. And from that one object that was discovered, uh, the, the people who had discovered it uh, suspected that there must be many more. They were finding objects in the Kuiper Belt, named after a theory proposed by astronomer Gerard Kuiper. The people had hypothesized the existence of, of some belt of material outside of, of Neptune, the, a, a region where, icy region where, where comets were stored waiting to come into the, into the inner solar system. And so that's what they were looking for. So Brown and his team started scanning the Kuiper Belt for bigger worlds. They found something, actually, Three somethings. So we give them nicknames so we would know what we were talking about. So this one that we found on December 28th, uh, which is now Haumea, uh, at the time we called um, Santa because it was Christmas time. By chance, another big one we found right after Easter. So we, of course, called it Easter Bunny. And the biggest one, the one that's more massive than Pluto, we actually found um, just after uh, Santa, actually. And we named it uh, Xena. After Xena, the warrior princess, who'd been a cult favorite on TV. We, we wanted something that started with an X, because people had been looking for this mythical planet X for a long time. So we wanted an X name. The International Astronomical Union, those professional astronomers with the yellow cards, approved the final formal names of new discoveries. Following the ancient tradition of naming planets after figures from mythology, Xena was renamed Eris after the Greek goddess of discord. Easter Bunny became Maki Maki after the chief god of Easter Island, and Santa was renamed for the Hawaiian volcano goddess Haumea. Haumea, one of my favorite objects in the Kuiper Belt. It's rapidly rotating. It goes spins once every four hours. Um, it's really elongated. So it's this huge, really fast rotating thing. It's got this icy, icy surface on it, but rock underneath. The reason all those things are happening is because a long time ago it got hit by another object in the Kuiper Belt, um, oblo a glancing blow. That glancing blow started it spinning, and which, you know, which uh, lengthened it. But at the same time, that glancing blow broke off all the ice that's on the outside of it. Two of those chunks of ice went into orbit around Haumea, and the rest of those chunks of ice blasted off but are now still in orbit around the sun, and we can find those objects around the sun. It's a pretty interesting story. And that's the mission of a scientist, says Brown not just being first to announce a discovery, but also first to provide explanations of the discovery. The problem is, it's scary, for one, is that you discover something in the solar system that, that you think you're the first one to discover. You spend maybe six months working on a paper. That's fast, by the way. To get a paper out in six months, which we always try to do, is hard. And you're working really fast, and you are also uh, looking at your email every five minutes, worried that somebody else is about to announce that they just discovered the same thing that you are already studying, because it could happen. In fact, it did happen to Brown. As he was finishing his report on Haumea, he had to rush off to the hospital for the birth of his daughter. Before he could get back to his paper, another observatory announced the discovery. 
Now, that somebody else discovering it, they didn't do this whole process that I talked about, about writing a scientific paper. They discovered it one day, and the next day announced it. Brown overshadowed that announcement by announcing the discovery of Eris, which turned out to be more massive than Pluto. If Pluto is a planet, then so is Eris, and any other small world in the Kuiper Belt. So how many planets does the solar system have? You, you can't miss this difference between these eight big things, or the four terrestrial planets and the four giant planets, the eight biggest things, and these populations of objects, all the asteroids and all the Kuiper Belt objects. It's, it's a profound classification that, that anyone would make and that people who study the solar system use on a day-to-day -day 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 basis. So once again, it was up to the Astronomical Union and the guys with the yellow cards. After, after two weeks of debate and uh, pretty vigorous and contentious debate, um, the final vote came down on what to do, and the vote was to demote Pluto, to declare there to be eight planets, to demote Pluto, and of course to, to demote the one object that I had found that was the tenth planet at the time. And I was, I have to say, thrilled, which is a strange reaction when your planet just got demoted. But it meant that the word planet uh, had scientific meaning, finally. So now we have a solar system with eight planets and a number of dwarf planets mixed in with bands of asteroids and Kuiper Belt objects. History and the astronomy books are being rewritten. My hope is that we can move from these cartoon pictures of the solar system to a real picture of the solar system so that by, by renaming these objects, by reclassifying these objects, we, we go for a deeper uh, scientific understanding for common people, understanding what's, what's, actually, what's actually out there, I think is a really important thing. People protesting Pluto's demotion may have the last laugh. The IAU decreed that the small worlds beyond Neptune be called Plutoids, certainly more dignified than calling them dwarves. But Mike Brown may have the last word. He's written a book called How I Killed Pluto and Why It Had It Coming, to which he adds, and why it made everyone goofy. I'm Bob Hershon for AAAS, the Science Society.